three guns on the stage. So uh, I tend to pick pieces with a lot of percussion. So I think it's a good thing. Um, I regretfully forgot one of the soloists in Blue Shoes, Jonathan Blue. <laughs> This next piece, Catherine uh, Saufelder is a graduate student studying at Yale University currently. She did her undergraduate degree at the New England Conservatory, and she is an extremely talented composer, only 23 years old. And what she has done here is married her voice with the voice of someone who died 400 years ago um, with uh, Giovanni Gabrielli. So this is Catherine Saufelder's cathedral, as soon as the percussion is ready. One thing about Gabriele's music is that um, oftentimes you do it in the antiphonal settings with um, split voices, so you can hear the back and forth interplay. You'll see that we have a different setup with a brass choir over here and one over here. So you're going to hear a bit of that passive back and forth with lower hands. Hope you enjoy.
You do what you gotta do. Um, the University of Montana not only produces fine players, um, as we've heard tonight with both groups, but they also produce some amazing composers. And um, I had the pleasure of a couple of years ago meeting one um, fairly recent Montana alum over coffee with uh, Professor Nichols, one of his mentors, uh, Mr. Christopher Stark. He was born in St. Ignatius and then went to Folsom uh, for his schooling. And then he came here to the University of Montana. He then headed off to the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music and he, is, he graduated from there with his master's and he's currently um, finishing up his doctorate at Cornell. So I found out that he had a piece for wind ensemble and electronics and last year we did our first piece with that and the marriage of, of um, manipulated sound and acoustic sound is something that I, I really enjoy um, just working out and playing with and um, exposing the band to it. We've had a ton of fun with Chris and this piece has been played by a lot of, a lot of very good groups across the country. So and I think it's just in its beginning stages, honestly, and I think that this will be a, um, a mainstay in the, in the repertoire, I think, for electroacoustic pieces. So um, this is Christopher Stark's Augenblick.
begin our last piece. I want to thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you to my colleagues who are the teachers of all of these fine young men and women. Uh, without their help, without their work, this wouldn't be possible. It's like they create the Cadillac and I just get to just test drive it. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So our last piece um, is one that I've, I've known about for several years and I've, I've wanted to perform. And um, this, uh, the composer David Mislanka has always been on my radar since I was a, a freshman at, at Michigan when I heard Child's Garden of Dreams. And um, it was just something that really struck me. And I played a significant amount of his music already. And when you're in Montana, it's easy to do so. And David is so gracious to join us tonight and speak about Testament. So please welcome Mr. David Mislanka. say once that he preferred his composers dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very sorry to disappoint him. <laughs> and very glad to be a living composer and uh, here tonight. Also, Chris Stark, a living composer here tonight. Um, the wind band movement um, over the last 50 years has produced an extraordinary amount of good music and has become um, a real force in um, new music, but more importantly at a grassroots level. Um, there are wind bands all over the country, all over the world. Um, I was in Japan um, last spring. Uh, there's a Japan Wind Ensemble Conductors Conference. They do wonderful music, they commission music. There are bands in Japan playing, playing, playing music. Um, my fourth symphony is going to be done in Singapore. <laughs> and Norway. And it was done, seventh symphony was done in Italy. Um, a symphony done in Spain um, by wind bands. These are all over the world. And there is this, this, this rising um, urgency, I'd like to use the word, about music and about making music and through the wind band medium. Um, the beautiful thing about it is that it is at this grassroots level. It is here. These people are able to play and do play and in playing um, build themselves. Build community. <coughs> build community in a powerful way. This is the thing which has moved me for my whole writing career, and as I've gotten old, uh, has um, been the, the primary focus of my, uh, my work, and that is to continue to foster the community um, which uh, comes out of music making. It opens the, the creative flow in people. It is face-to-face, creative flow work. And this is the kind of work which will be our salvation. Uh, we are in a very difficult time. There's no guarantee we're going to survive it. I do believe that we will. And what we're doing here tonight and what is being done across the world in music making by young people primarily um, is going to be one of those major factors in the huge change that we see coming to us in this world. The Testament piece was written in 2001, immediately following the 9-11 thing. I had been commissioned to write a piece by uh, some uh, high school and university groups in Texas, and I've been thinking about what to do, and that happened. And that was a um, watershed moment for everybody. All thoughts changed at that moment. Um, suddenly there arose in me the need to affirm the rightness of what we are doing, the rightness of who we are as human beings through music. And so this piece began to arise. 
I wrote, uh, and you have it in your program, I wrote a, a small poetic piece which um, tells my feeling for music. And even though you have it printed there, I want you to hear it in my voice and I'll read it to you. When I consider the darkness that we carry, the pain we inflict on those close to us and on those we don't even know, the death we bring through rage, ignorance, indifference, I say, please God, help us melt the rage into love and love into understanding and acceptance. When I consider a world where we are at each other's mercy, where evil can be done to anyone, by anyone, anywhere, I say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Teach us how to forgive. Teach us how to be forgiven because it is not a simple business. When I consider music, my center, my life, the great harmonizer, the channel of living energy, the open channel of the soul, God's voice in each of us, bringing souls all over the world to peaceful union, a living past, a living present, a living future. I say how beautiful it is, how beautiful it is. Thank you, I hope you enjoy.